you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new redesigned 2021 hyundai santa fe courtesy of jack giambalvo hyundai in york pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below and so as i alluded to there are plenty of changes for the 2021 santa fe and of course to go along with that you do have america's best warranty being five years 60 thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 thousand mile powertrain warranty and to go along with that also three years of free complimentary maintenance that includes things like the oil changes tire rotation things like that so that is amazing as well and also just as a side note i do own a santa fe myself i actually have a 2017 hyundai santa fe has approximately 33,000 miles on it right now absolutely no issues whatsoever with it so far and so in this video i will be testing out everything about this one going over acceleration braking handling ride quality tech sound system exhaust clip all of that stuff so Having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2021 Santa Fe. First one being the SE starting at $26,850. SEL for $28,650. Limited for $38,600. And the calligraphy for $42,100. And by the way, that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. If you wanted to add all wheel drive to any of those prices, simply add $1,700 then. And so to go along with all of those trim levels, there are actually two different engine configurations for the Santa Fe. First one is going to belong to the SE and SEL. And by the way, we do have the SEL trim level today. That engine configuration is a 2.5 liter direct injected inline four cylinder, putting out 191 horsepower at 6,100 RPM, 181 pound feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed automatic with paddle shifters, which you guys know we will test out in a little bit here. MPG numbers for that one come in at 25 city, 28 highway for the front wheel drive, 22 in the city and 25 on the highway then for the all wheel drive. And best of all, taking regular unleaded fuel there. And so but then as you can imagine, the other engine configuration is going to belong to the remaining two trim levels being the limited and calligraphy. This one is going to be a 2.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder, 277 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 311 pound-feet of torque available at 4,000 RPM, power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight-speed wet dual clutch with paddle shifters. This is the same transmission, by the way, that is found in some of the sportier cars Hyundai makes, like the Sonata N, for example, or Sonata N-Line, I should say, for example. But all in all, MPG numbers for that engine configuration, 22 city, 28 highway for the front-wheel drive, 21 in the city, 28 on the highway yet again, for the all-wheel drive, so just get the all-wheel drive for those. But anyways, regular unleaded fuel, believe it or not, once again. And so before we did the paddle shifter test and acceleration test, did want to mention there are some driving modes, of course, for the Santa Fe. The drive mode dial is located just to the right of the shift buttons. And by the way, to change gears in this thing, there is not a traditional shift dial. It's just simply a button setup. So just push the D for drive, P for park, R for reverse, and so on. It's pretty simple there. But anyways, back to the drive mode, smart, eco comfort and sport is what they will include and also new for 2021 snow sand and mud as well that is pretty cool ultimately those drive modes will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response traction control settings as well along with the all-wheel drive torque distribution depending on palm which drive mode you put it in obviously not to mention the gauge cluster and i'll go a little bit more into the gauge cluster later in the video but it will also adjust the colors and the display overall on the gauges so that's pretty cool too but anyways having now said all of that what do you guys say let's go ahead and put it in sport driving mode here i'm just going to turn the dial to the right it is going to immediately downshift for me holding the rpms at a much higher level giving you more power on demand and the gauges look so stick and sweet anyways let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's test out the paddle shifters just want to see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right so we are going to do an acceleration test a paddle shifter test here together i am in first gear here here we go Yeah, there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, it's pretty much as expected for SUVs. I will say that a lot of times you are gonna get that delay with the paddle shifters. Having said that, with the different transmission setup with that wet dual clutch for the limited and calligraphy trim levels, 
those paddle shifters might be a bit quicker, probably are gonna be a bit quicker, but since we have the SEL trim level today, there is a delay to the paddle shifters. Just wanted to mention, as far as the acceleration goes, it's plenty fine, it's pretty much as expected. It's nothing that's gonna blow you away or anything like that, but it'll get the job done. But to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 12 inch solid rear discs. As far as the braking feel goes, it's actually been plenty fine for me today. I know in my 2017 Santa Fe, it is much softer of a braking feel, but I feel like they improved upon that with the 2021 Santa Fe because it actually, it's pretty nice. I don't mind it, but anyways, Touching on suspension and handling, up front you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension, in the back independent multi-link rear suspension, gas pressurized shock absorbers, front and rear stabilizer bars, it's all pretty standard at this point. As far as the ride quality goes, that's something I love in my Santa Fe and it's definitely still on point in the 2021 model year. Definitely soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections quite nicely. It's definitely a very smooth ride in the Santa Fe and it's one of the things I love about this thing. Also, steering feel, the 2017 that I own, it's loosey goosey. This 2021, again, definitely improved upon. It's a much heavier weight, especially at slow speeds. It better helps point you in the direction that you wanna go. So a lot of SUVs out there will have a much looser steering feel and it doesn't give you as much feedback, but I love the 2021 Santa Fe. Not the heaviest thing in the world, of course, but really it's just right for this SUV, I will say that. As far as cabin noise goes, once again, it's pretty on point. I will say though, if you go with the Limited or Caligra those two particular trim levels it's going to be much better a much more serene cabin that's due in part because there is acoustic laminated glass just for those two trim levels so it's going to absorb a lot of that exterior wind noise but having said that I've been over 50 miles per hour in this thing and it's still quite nice definitely not a whole lot of exterior noises coming into the cabin it gets a little noisy when you really hit the gas with this particular engine setup but other than that the wind noise is definitely on par so no issues there for me then touching on visit Ability. I can see perfectly fine out the back. Definitely no issues there. It's pretty much as expected. Rain sensing windshield wipers coming with the limited trim level and up. And there is a head up display only if you go with the calligraphy trim level. That is how you're going to get that. Essentially, it's going to project your speed, speed limit, and some safety features up onto your windshield so you can better help keep your eyes on the road, less likely to get into an accident and all that fun stuff. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of this refreshed 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe. Completely revised look for the 2021 model year and definitely a better look in my opinion. But let's go ahead and start up front with the front grille because that is one of the things that did indeed change for the 2021 model year. So it is a large redesigned front grille, added chrome to it for the SEL trim level and up. Headlights are actually now incorporated into the corners of the grille. You guys can kind of see that. And by the way, the headlights are in the bottom portion. Those little top slots up above are actually a continuation of the LED daytime running lights, which do come standard across the board not to mention led headlights do come standard on every single trim level of the santa fe gotta love that because that is usually not the case with other suvs out there right now so automatic feature coming with that as well meaning when it starts to get dark out at night those headlights will turn on automatically for you there high beam assist also coming standard as well though I love that feature personally on my Sonata. Basically, you put the high beams on at night. If it senses a car coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim those high beams back to low beams. And then when that vehicle is gone, it puts it back up to high beams for you. So it is like automatic headlights, just with the high beams. So absolutely love that as well. And overall, very menacing look. You guys can see those uh, side air curtains towards the corners of the front bumper there as well, directing air around the wheel and tire combination there too. But Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of the Santa Fe here. So let's go ahead and start up top. Silver roof rails do come standard on this one. Rear privacy glass also coming standard. Body colored door handles for all trim levels as well. With some satin chrome accents as well for the limited and calligraphy trim levels. When it comes to those side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors for all trims across the board. Power folding for the limited trim level and up. Also heated for the limited trim level and up. You will get LED integrated turn signals 
Want to guess? Limited trim level enough once again. And of course, chrome window surrounds coming standard. And there's some chrome trim accent towards the bottom side skirts on this one as well, actually. Then take a look down at the wheel setup. 18-inch alloys for the SE and SEL. That, of course, is what you're looking at right now. 19-inch alloys for the Limited and Calligraphy. And 20-inch alloys are also going to be available for the Calligraphy. So there's two actual wheel options for that last trim level there. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Santa Fe. And so since we are around back here, once again, starting up top, shark fin antenna, just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light, just below that rear window wiper as well. LED taillights, if you were curious, come with the limited and calligraphy. They are going to be optional on the SEL. We actually do have an optional package option that gave us those taillights. So you are looking at LED taillights right now, a little better illumination at night. Satin chrome rear bumper accents. Also, you guys can see that down below. And of course, lastly, a single exhaust outlet with the satin chrome tip. So I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. So, but now since we are around back of the Santa Fe, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free power lift gate. If you were to go with the limited or calligraphy, so that is one way to open it up. There is actually a button on the lift gate itself, of course, simply just press that and walk away if you want. Also a button on the key fob, and lastly, there is a button by the driver's side left knee as well. So quite a few different ways you can go about opening it up. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 36.4 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down. And by the way, there's actually a button back there to press to actually fold down those rear seats as well. So that's kind of convenient if you're in the cargo area. So I like that. But once folded down, 72.1 cubic feet is what that number comes in at. By the way, for comparison's sake, the Toyota RAV4 comes in at 69.7 cubic feet, Honda CRV at 75.8. So Honda CRV is the highest in the class. So the Santa Fe slots right in there in the middle, essentially. But 72.1 is definitely a decent amount of space back there. We'll say that. But there is a ton going on in the cargo area. I did want to mention in-floor storage and a decent amount of it actually does come standard for every single trim level so you gotta love that 12 volt power outlet you can also find back there there is a cargo cover back there as well so we of course do have that that power folding second row that i mentioned that's going to come with the limited trim level and up it's going to be optional for the sel that we have today should have mentioned that from the get-go and you do have some grocery bag hooks of course back there as well so quite a bit but anyways making our way now to the rear leg room that comes in at 41.7 inches a ton for reference i'm an even six feet tall this is how much space i have back there again for comparison sake honda crv at 40.4 toyota rav4 at 37.8 ford escape at 40.7 so this is where the hyundai santa fe comes in first actually the rear leg room is really quite amazing for this suv i will say that i had plenty of room personally but also heated rear seats are going to come with the limited and calligraphy trim levels rear ventilation is going to come standard across the board there is a rear center armrest with cup holders also coming standard rear side window sunshades with the limited and calligraphy it is going to be optional on our sel here trim level today front seat bat mat pockets is pretty much as expected and you will actually find two usb charging ports for those rear passengers as well and i love that they are two because if you have two kids both of them want to charge up the tablets that's definitely a good thing and i emphasize this because my sonata has one <laughs> anyways it's pretty cool that there's two back there but pretty much everything you could possibly want for the rear passengers but then making our way to the front seats cloth seating coming with the se and sel leather seating for the limited and calligraphy and by the way the calligraphy that's going to give you quilted napa leather so a little higher end leather setup there six-way power driver seat for the se eight-way power driver seat for the sel trim level and up and by the way two-way power lumbar for the sel as well you will get four-way power lumbar for the limited and calligraphy also with leg cushion extensions for the limited and calligraphy as well eight-way power adjustable passenger seat for the limited and calligraphy ventilated front seats with those two as well memory settings for those two as well heated front seats though come with the sel trim level and up gotta love that 
that. Those heated seat buttons, by the way, are located directly behind the drive mode dial there. So in case anybody was curious where they're at, that's always nice. And overall, the seating was plenty comfortable. I've had no issues and I have no issues in my 2017 Santa Fe either. So seating is plenty fine. Now take a look at the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key, actually. You do have your Hyundai logo on the one side, and when you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear hatch, and the circular button that says hold, that is going to be your remote start, which is going to come standard on the SEL trim level and up, along with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button, which is located kind of just by the driver's right knee there. And so this is where it really gets good. When it comes to the gauge cluster of the Santa Fe, 12.3 inch digital gauge cluster coming standard with the limited and calligraphy optional on the SEL, we do have that option. Otherwise, you're gonna get a standard gauge cluster with analog gauges and a smaller digital gauge cluster in the middle, but this is a full digital gauge cluster, which again is completely customizable. You can change the driving mode, for instance. It's gonna completely adjust the look up there, giving you more red hues for sport mode, more blue and white hues for comfort mode, etc. So that is pretty cool. Of course, you can check out a bunch of different information up there as well by using the steering wheel mounted controls found on the right side of the steering wheel, giving you things like your average miles per gallon. There is a digital speedometer you can display up there if you wanted to. There's a compass, there's your tire pressure at any given time. When you need your next oil change, the list goes on. So really a good bit you can check out up there. And again, the best part is the digital gauge cluster. Gauges look so stinking cool when it's digital. But anyways, let's now go ahead and take a look at overall interior quality of this one. First thing I wanted to mention is the panoramic sunroof that we have today. Limited calligraphy trim levels will get this. It's gonna be optional on the SEL, but having said that, it is one of the largest panoramic sunroofs that I've seen in quite a while. It certainly extends well into the rear seats, kind of to the rear seat headrest. That is wonderful. And the best part about the sunroof is when you're at higher speeds in the Santa Fe, there's no wind noise coming into the cabin from this sunroof, which a lot of times does happen to certain different levels depending upon which SUV you're testing out. But that is wonderful. There's no wind noise from the sunroof and it is huge. So that's pretty cool. Anyways, cloth headliner coming with the SE and SEL. You will get an upgraded headliner with the limited suede headliner with the calligraphy. Love that. LED interior lighting coming with the limited trim level and up. Optional on the SEL. Dual zone climate control. Same deal there as well. Wireless phone charger is going to come on the SEL trim level and up. And in case anybody was curious because it took me a couple seconds to figure out where it was, it's actually a little slow lot right next to one of the uh, right next to the rear cup holder you just slide your phone down there that is where the wireless phone charger is going to be located like it's always in a different position depending upon what car I'm driving so that's where that one is going to be located and speaking of you do have two cup holders you have a USB charging port directly in front of the phone charger you also have some rubberized storage just above the passenger side glove box and speaking of that passenger side glove box handle is pretty darn cool as well it's finished in a nice kind of silverish plastic look, although it's plastic, it still looks stinking cool. When it comes to the plastics that Hyundai always uses, they don't keep it with it just a regular matte gray finish like a lot of other automakers do. They give it a design. So you see all of these buttons located in front of the cup holders. They could have left that with a matte gray boring finish, but they actually put a nice soft kind of design to it. So I do like that as well. One of the best parts about the Santa Fe guys is underneath all that stuff, you have more rubberized storage. So there's a little hidden compartment where you can store maybe a purse or something that you wanted to conceal. And that's going to be found down below with a 12 volt power outlet and yet another USB charging port down there too so that is pretty cool as well and overall interior quality is plenty fine for me so absolutely no issues there I feel like it's definitely gotten better since 2017 so absolutely love that also wanted to mention home light controls you can find just underneath the rear view mirror for up to three different garage doors but now let's go ahead and make our way to the tech display because the goodness continues here eight inch color touchscreen display coming standard with the SE and SEL trim levels 10 and a quarter inch color touchscreen display coming with the limited and calligraphy optional on the SEL that we do indeed have here today. And so on either tech screen, wanted to mention Bluetooth and audio streaming comes standard, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay as well. For the 10 and a quarter inch screen, you're gonna get factory navigation and also something called Sounds of Nature, which I always like to show off because I think it's stinking cool. So if you hit that Sounds of Nature button, you have the choice between a lively forest, calm sea waves, 
rainy day, open air cafe, warm fireplace, and snowy village. So having mentioned all of those now, what do you guys say I shut up here real quick and let you guys listen to it and I will be right back. And so in addition to that, the fun continues here. There's something called quiet mode, where it essentially completely closes off the rear speakers and limits the front speakers to a volume of, I believe, seven. So it's quieter up front. So that is essentially for if the kids were to fall asleep in the back on a long road trip to Ocean City, Maryland or something, and you wanted to keep them asleep for the drive, quiet mode is gonna help you do that. Although you could just turn off the radio, but if you still wanted to listen to whatever you're listening to and you wanted their space to be quiet, that's how you're gonna do it. So that's a pretty cool feature for that reason. Of course, you can check out your climate control information. You can actually do that up on that screen for either setup, whether it be the eight inch or the 10 and a quarter inch screen. So that's pretty cool. Can of course check out your radio settings as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems on this one, six speakers coming with the SE and SEL trims. However, if you were to go with the limited trim level and up, we'll get a 12 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system that is optional for the SEL. We do have that option here. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. Little Alice in Chains, the bass guitar, when that kicked in, there is a good bit of bass with that Harman Kardon sound system. Acoustic guitar sounded good as well. There's a good bit of clarity. So really that 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system was plenty good for the Santa Fe. That was a really, really good sound system for this one. I will say that that was a chill song, but a really good sound system. But last thing I wanted to mention on that text screen is when you of course do put the Santa Fe in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Not to mention if you go with the limited trim level and up, you will get a surround view monitor letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention is the 2020 Santa Fe was an IIHS top safety pick. So although the 2021 model year hasn't been tested yet, you would assume it would continue that tradition or got better one or the other. But anyways, front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure pressure monitoring system. It's all pretty boring stuff, quite honestly, but also standard across the board, rear occupant alert, forward collision avoidance assist with pedestrian and cyclist detection, adaptive cruise control with stop and go, which by the way is an excellent system with Hyundai and Genesis products. I used it on the way to this dealership to test out this car. It is pretty darn cool. Lane keep assist, another excellent system, driver attention warning system as well. And then if you go with the limited or calligraphy, you will, in addition to all of that, get highway driving assist, which essentially is Hyundai's level two autonomous driving assistant, lane following assist as well, any blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert, which you guys know is the little triangular icons in the side mirrors there. So you don't go turning into anyone in your blind spot. But all in all, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the new Santa Fe, I do like the redesign, especially seeing it in person. It looks really good. I like the new calligraphy trim level as well because in the past with the Santa Fe's you weren't able to get things like for instance a suede headliner that is pretty darn cool with that trim level. Tech is great in this one and really Hyundai and Genesis across the board really do quite well in tech. I mention it because you got the 10 and a quarter inch infotainment screen and the 12 inch digital gauge cluster. So that's pretty cool. America's best warranty. That's also good for peace of mind. Three years free maintenance if you want to save your money. An amazingly huge panoramic sunroof. I could go on and on rear window sunshades, but very, very nice. There's a reason I got my 2017 Santa Fe. I still love it and it's gotten even better now with the 2021. So definitely a very solid pick here, but let me know what you guys think of the new Santa Fe in the comments section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on TikTok at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.